welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to make the Waterline Shawl by Ann Weaver. This beautiful shawl uses one ball of Red Heart Sprinkles yarn to get this really beautiful, gradual, color changing look in a stunning shawl pattern. This is a very easy, beginner friendly shawl pattern that you will have no trouble making. As long as you know how to do the knit stitch, I will show you the few stitches you need beyond that to make this really great shawl. This is a free pattern. I've put a link in the video description box right below this video. And while you're down there, please smash that like button as my kids say. As far as the materials, as I mentioned, you only need one ball of the Red Heart It's a Wrap Sprinkles yarn, a pair of size six knitting needles, a removable stitch marker, and then a tapestry needle to weave in your ends. Pretty simple. The full list of the materials is listed in the pattern as well. Once you have your materials, let's go ahead and get started with this really great pattern. For this video, I'm going to use some larger yarn so you can better see how the stitches are made. We want to begin by casting on one stitch. So our slip knot will actually act as that one stitch. Pretty simple. Once we have that one stitch on our needle, we are going to work an increase called the knit front, back, and front. So we will go into our slip knot here and we will knit it through the front leg. We will now extend up and swivel around and go into the back leg of that same stitch. Can you see that? Thrown through the back leg and we will knit through the back leg. Now I will extend up again and go into the front leg of that same stitch again. So what I have done is I've made three stitches out of one. Now I can let that stitch fall off my left hand needle and I have three stitches on my right hand needle and I'm ready to jump in to the stitch pattern. For this we will start off with a knit one and the designer wants us to add a marker here. Now she suggests a removable stitch marker just like this placing this on the needle. I am not a fan of these stitch markers on my needle. Um, I prefer stitch markers that are a little bit closer to the size of my needle so that way they don't stretch out the stitches. So I'm going to use a non-removable stitch marker and later on I'll show you how I would introduce a second one when I need to move my stitch marker. But if you want to use a removable one, you can totally do that, okay? Once you've added your stitch marker, go ahead and knit the remaining two stitches. We turn our work and for row three, we start off with a knit one and then we yarn over. So this is one of the stitches we need to know for this pattern. We have our yarn in back, bring it between your needles and then over top of your right hand needle back to the back. That is your yarn over. Then you would carry on by knitting to your marker. Slip the marker and then knit one. Turn your work. And this is row four we're beginning right now. And row four is the start of your repeat. So you would knit all the stitches on row four. When you come to your marker, just move it and then finish knitting the row. This is also a wrong side row. On the wrong side row, you will just knit. Turn your work. And we're on row five. First stitch is knit. And then we yarn over again. Bring our yarn between the needles, over the top, and back to the back. And then knit to your marker. Slip your marker and knit the last one. You'll notice in the pattern you're now supposed to repeat rows four and five until you have 21 stitches and then work row four one more time. I have gone ahead and worked ahead through my 21 stitches and that row four. So I'm on the right side of my fabric ready to begin wave section one. I start off this section by knitting the first stitch yarning over and then knitting the next stitch. 
You'll notice now the pattern tells you to remove this marker and place it right here. So this is where if I had the removable marker, I'd remove it and place it right here. But because I have a marker that I can't remove until I get to it, I will just grab another marker and place that there. And then when I get down to this one, I'll remove it. All right, does that make sense? So there's my marker. So I've knit one, yarn over, knit one, placed my marker, and then this is going to be the repeat. Are you ready? We will knit two together three times. So here are the next two stitches on my left hand needle and I will knit them together. That is the other stitch you need to know for this stitch pattern. So that was one. This is two. And that is three. Okay, so we've did that three times. Now we have to knit one and yarn over a total of six times. So I will knit one stitch and then yarn over. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now I will knit two together three more times. So knit two together. One, two, and three. I will remove this marker, that's the one that I was supposed to remove, and I finish off with my knit one. I have 22 stitches on here. So even though I did these six stitches here where it was knit one, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, I did not increase a total of six times because I did three knit two togethers right here and three knit two togethers right here. I have 22 stitches because of this one yarn over right there. That's my increase. Every time we work our yarn over along this diagonal edge, that is what's giving us our increase in stitches, never what's going on along here. Notice in the pattern that that wave section one is just one row, and that one row is the full wave stitch pattern repeat. In future wave sections, you'll be working that repeat over a larger multiple of stitches, so you'll have many repeats along the way, but overall, you already know how to do all the stitches you need to know for the lace sections. Pretty cool, right? You now need to continue on in the pattern working rows four and five until you get to 39 stitches. Then work a row four one more time. After you get to 39 stitches, we are ready to begin wave section two. And that's where I am right here. When you work along, you will notice that as we're increasing along this edge, our stitch marker is gradually moving further and further away from the edge. So when you hit 39 stitches, you'll have 20 stitches till the marker and then 19 stitches after the marker. In the wave section two, the designer wants us to move our marker again. I am going to go ahead and add a second marker so that way you can really see how these stitch multiples are separated along all of these stitches on our needle. So let's go ahead and do wave section two. Wave section two has us begin with our knit one, yarn over, and then knit one. We're always working that increase along that edge throughout the entire pattern. And this is where we are supposed to place a marker once again. And the instructions tell us to remove this marker and place it here, but I'm gonna place a second marker there so we can see how these stitches work up. Now we are going to jump into this pattern. So we will do a knit two together three times. So we know how to do this. So we will knit two together one, two, and three. 
Now we want to do a knit one, yarn over six times. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and now we have to do a knit two together a total of six times. You will notice that it will be three times before the marker and then three times after the marker. What that means here is as we go and do these knit two togethers a total of six times, I want you to notice something. So that was three times and notice all of that right there, that's everything we did on the first wave section. And so this is where I'm supposed to have this marker gone, remember? I'm gonna leave it there just so that we can see because that is one stitch pattern repeat. And now I'm gonna continue on with my knit two togethers to complete that set of six I need to do. So that, was, that would be number four, number five, And number six okay notice this is also one two three after the marker just like we started right and now I need to do knit one and yarn overs for a total of six times there's one two three four five, six, and now I finish up here with knit two togethers three times. So there's one, two, three, and then knit one. Can you see that? So we have just made it to where we have two repeats of the section one lace that we did. See that? So there was one and there's two. Rows two through eight are essentially a repeat of rows four and five, okay? So we will just simply knit on our wrong side and on our right side, we will make sure that we increase right here at the edge. When we get to row nine, that's when we do another row of our lace. On row nine, we begin the row just like all of the right side rows with a knit one, yarn over, and then we will knit to the marker. So there's no lace happening right now. We'll keep all of the stitches to that marker in basic garter stitch with our increase right there at the edge. Once you slip your marker, it's time to jump into that lace stitch pattern again. We already know what this lace stitch pattern is, even without looking at our instructions. We will knit two together a total of three times to begin. And then we jump in to our knit one, yarn over a total of six times. After you've completed that six times, you will then knit two together six times again. But remember, I left my marker there, so that way I know that I will do knit two together three times, slip my marker, and then I'm back to my repeat again. Using the markers in the stitch pattern like this really helps you be able to stay consistent with what the stitch pattern is. We know after the first wave section that the stitch pattern multiple is knit two together three times, knit one, yarn over six times, and then knit two together three times.
By keeping those marker is, markers in place, we know what our stitches are going to be between those markers. So if you find that you tend to get lost a little bit in lace stitches, using those markers will really help. So instead of following the instructions where she has you remove the markers, simply add another marker and that will help you maintain your stitch multiple. That is a special extra tip you're getting because you're watching this video. Let's go ahead and finish up this stitch pattern so that you can see what the finishing of row nine will look like. At the end of row nine, you can really begin to see where the yarn overs are above the yarn overs from row one of this section. So we've been able to keep this really nice wave stitch pattern. Again, it's within these markers. And then we have all the stitches outside of the markers where we're working our increase in basic garter stitch. To finish off this wave section, you repeat rows three through 10 one more time. Then you'll follow the instructions and you'll go back to repeating rows four and five of the setup section until you have the set number of stitches you need for the next wave section. Notice in the sample here that as you work through the pattern and you get the number of stitches you need for each wave section, you're increasing the number of waves that you get in each of the sections. It's really quite beautiful. Look at that. So as you go along, you will have more and more stitches to work your wave stitch pattern. And then you finish off the whole piece with the wave stitch pattern. And you will bind off these stitches. And you will bind them off just as you normally would bind off any particular shawl pattern. But why don't I go ahead and grab a swatch here and show you how to bind off these stitches just in case you don't know how. Let me show you how to bind off on a basic little swatch here. So when you bind off stitches, you will knit two stitches just like normal. And then you take your left hand needle and you will have that back stitch, the first one you knit, jump up and over that front stitch. Then you knit one more. So you have two stitches on your right hand needle, have the back stitch, jump up and over the front stitch. Knit one more to get two stitches, have the back stitch, jump up and over the front stitch. And you will do this all along the row until all of your stitches are nice and bound off. Binding off really is that simple. Go ahead and bind off all those stitches, then weave in any tails that you have and your shawl is complete. You will be able to wrap this shawl around your neck and all of your friends will give you a round of applause and ask you if you can make them one next. The great thing is there are some beautiful colors in It's a Wrap Sprinkles, so you will not hesitate to get that yarn back on your needles again. I hope you enjoyed this video and it showed you a couple of tips and tricks on how to keep track of your lace stitches now that you know the lace multiple and you can use those stitch markers to your advantage. And just remember, keep everything super simple. For every decrease, uh, knit two together, there's going to be a subsequent knit one yarn over, so that set will always be those 18 stitches and you are only increasing along that side edge. I can't wait to see your finished shawls. When you share on social media, do me a favor and use hashtag MarleyBird so that way I can find your post and smash your like button. I want to make sure that I'm giving you two big thumbs up. I hope you have enjoyed this video and come back here for more videos, helping you become a better knitter and crocheter. I'm Marley Bird, this is the Marley Bird YouTube channel, and this is the Waterline Shawl by Ann Weaver. Talk to you soon, bye. Hey, thanks for joining me today on the channel. If you want more videos just like that one, check out some of these other videos that I've already handpicked for you. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that way you're up to date whenever I release a new video. And don't forget, smash that like button as my kids say. Bye guys.